today I am here with the fabulous Henna Khan, who is the author of this book, and this book, and this book. Henna, welcome to the Library of Congress. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here with you. So what book have you brought for me today? Yeah, I have an exciting debut by author Rhonda Rumani called Tagging Freedom. It features two cousins, Kareem and Samira, who grow up in different parts of the world. Kareem's in Syria, Samira is here in the US, and they are forced together suddenly when Kareem leaves Syria at the very beginning of the revolution. Um, but they have to learn a lot about friendship and what it means to be free and what it means to stand up and use your voice for others, even those who live far away. Oh my goodness, and it's a debut, meaning it's this author's first book. Exactly, and she did such a beautiful job with it. How did you discover her? So I was lucky enough to be paired with her in this mentorship program. Mm -hmm. So I got to read this book early and I was so impressed by the depth and the voice and the way she really translates these big messages into a very readable way and it's very, very inspiring. What's one of the messages that you feel like really stuck for you inside this book? I think it's that young people really have more power than we realize sometimes to use their voices to advocate for the rights and freedoms of people around the world. And they were actually instrumental in starting the Syrian revolution, which was something I learned. But you know, young people around the world, we see it all the time, are you know, some of the biggest proponents of rights and freedoms. And um, I love the way that message comes through. What were you like as a young reader? I was a pretty voracious reader. I was lucky that my mother was a big pusher of books and she would take my family pretty regularly to the public library and we would actually take bags with us that we would fill up with books. And that is a lot of how I spent my free time as a kid, especially during the summer. Um, I didn't have too many camps or activities, but I spent my time reading. Um, always something new in those bags, always something that I knew I would love and return to over and over again. I'm a big rereader of my favorites. And um, yeah, and I read really widely, which I think really helped make me the writer and storyteller I am today that I just tried so many different types of books and loved them all. Why do you think you reread books? Even though I knew what was going to happen, I think I, I just loved the feeling of going back into a book that I adored, getting to hang out with these characters who kind of felt like friends, mm -hmm. and, and just the comfort of it. And I knew I was going to be entertained and that I would love it. And I think every time you reread a book, you find something new. So how is it that you would um, decide what to read as a kid? Yeah, I think like most kids, you know, it was a matter of wandering the shelves, you know, looking at covers. I, I had go-to authors. I loved Beverly Cleary and Judy Bloom and some others. Um, as I got older, I got more into fantasy and I loved the Tolkien series. But um, I think it was a matter of what happened to be nearby. Now, I happen to hear through the grapevine that you have a book you are a big proponent of libraries, which is wonderful, me too. Um, but you've written a book about the oldest library. So what is, where is the oldest library? What is this book? Tell me a little bit about it. It's called Behind My Doors, and it's based on the oldest continually operating library, which is in Fez, Morocco, al Qadawiyan Library, which was actually founded by a woman, Fatima Al-Firi, back in the 800s. Uh, and I just love the story of you know, a woman dreaming up the idea of the library, but then also saving this library. Um, That's and amazing. Is it, it a back. picture book? It is a picture book. Nice. So about these, you know, told from the perspective of the library itself, actually. <laughs> So the library is the character, yeah, the main character. Yeah, the library character. is oh, the one awesome. narrating its own story. I love the corners of the world that you are writing about, how you write Pakistani families in a way that feels very true to the reality of Pakistani families and also relatable to everybody's family. So what's the magic in that? What is your secret sauce? How do you do it? You know, we all love a flaky pastry, right? We know the joy of that, whether it's an empanada or a samosa or a tart, you know, and so I think a lot of times adding those very specific details about a culture, about food, about dress, about the, the scent of something can really draw a reader in, but mm -hmm. make them feel like they're there. Um, but also many times realize that what they're reading feels very familiar um, and something that they, they can absolutely imagine or even have experienced themselves. I, I also 
love the books that you write that are very focused on the lives of girls. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of writing the lives of girls. And so um, do you have like a type of girl that you like to write most? Is there a, um, something about the lives of girls that really interests you as a writer that you like to sort of unpack in your writing? I like writing about the girls who maybe aren't uh, the most outspoken or the most confident, uh, the most popular, <laughs> and maybe the ones who are a little bit underestimated, even by themselves. Um, what some people call the quiet girls, but my characters aren't quiet. They're just maybe not as, uh, you know, uh, as much of a force as some of the other girls we see in books. But I love being able to represent these girls, and, and they're all passionate in their own ways about their families, about their friends, um, about whatever it is they're interested in, you know, to do with themselves in the world. Um, but I think there's so much room for these girls to have so much heart and, and humanity and hopefully relatability. Uh, and I hope so many other girls will see themselves in these characters. So when did you decide that you wanted to be a writer? Were you a kid when you decided that or a grown-up? I, I think I was always a writer at heart. You know, I was always the kid who, who was writing stories or a family newspaper, but it was very private and personal. Even a family newspaper, I didn't have a readership. But, um, but I, I think even though I was a pretty active writer as a kid, uh, I didn't feel comfortable or confident enough to call myself a writer. I really thought I needed some sort of seal or award um, to say, okay, you are a writer. And I love telling kids that if you write, you are a writer. You don't need to wait for someone to anoint you <laughs> to be a writer or give you permission to write. It has been so beautiful to have you here with me at the library. Thanks for coming today. Oh, thank you. And I just can't wait to see all the different things that you are writing.